Okay, Mindy. So, question. Before last night's results, who did you think was going to win the election? Well, I thought that things were looking really good for Trump, but I was having some doubts and worries and fears, which we know where that comes from, that um, Kamala might win. But after I voted yesterday and dropped off my mail-in ballot, I did a live and I was sharing that I just felt peace. Like regardless of what was going to happen, I just felt peace that like everything was going to be okay. And also that I did my duty and used my agency, what was in my control to vote. And I think that was also why I had some like peace and felt that my duty was completed. Yeah. So, yeah. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. What about you? I think this, <clears throat> I think the same. Um, like when I thought about it, I felt like he would probably win. Um, I remember right after the assassination attempt in July that like on X, there were a lot of people like posting like, um, you know, election maps where the entire country was red. And I was like, well, I don't think that that'll happen. And they probably didn't either, but, um, people thought that that would probably help his chances. And I don't know if it did or not. It probably had some effect, but anyway, when I thought about it, I felt like he probably would win, <clears throat> but I also kind of like, I could I could have seen it going the other way too. I was prepared for both scenarios. But but here we are. Now we know who the president's going to be for the next 4 years. And um you know, both your channel and my channel, we talk a lot about the second coming and I wonder how this will affect the timeline of events. So for example, one thing that I'm wondering is what's going to happen with this war in Israel because up until this point, I have felt that this probably is the final war. But now that Trump is going to be president, I feel like he's going to be able to uh, get things to calm down. Like, I don't think that the enemies of Israel are going to be uh, as bold as, as they would have been if Harris would have won. And so, because like the whole thing is that the final war, if you're to take it literally, the way that it talks about it in the scriptures is that there's going to be an invasion of Israel going all the way to Jerusalem itself. And so with Trump in power, I, I don't know how likely that is that Israel would be invaded. D do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I do. I think that in globally, there's going to be some stability or some anticipation of stability because of his winning. And after thinking about it for some time, I don't know that it's going to make much of a difference that he won, you know, versa, versus um, Kamala winning. And the reason I've thinking that I'm not like sold on it, but I'm thinking about it is because the things that are already in motion and that there's been so many things in motion over with Ukraine and Russia and now North Korea over in Ukraine and also with Israel and Iran in that region. I think things are so much in motion that there's a chance that they might not stop. They might, maybe they'll slow down for a bit of time, but I don't know that it's going to halt or really stop anything from going on. Um, also with Israel, I just have the sense that um, Netanyahu has like pulled back a bit from the United States and that might change now that um, they know that Trump is the nominee or is elected um, and going to be taking office. Uh, but they were kind of pulling back, not letting the United States necessarily know about some attacks that they were doing, you know, maybe losing possibly a little bit of respect for the United States. And I almost feel like he's just going to keep going with whatever his plans are. And then I'm not sure if you saw in the news, you probably did. But last night, um, he fired Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant. And there's a lot due to professional disagreements. And there's like 55% of Israel's who are opposing this firing, according to some polls. And so I just, I don't know. I feel like Netanyahu is on his course. It's been over a year now since they've started this. I think he just wants to like try and get the region to do what like whatever their objectives and goals are and also trump in the past has been tough on iran um and so i i think with israel in that region things may not slow down maybe in other parts of the world other conflicts but i'm not sure i don't have that sense really that things are going to slow down much um with israel yeah what well for all we know maybe it won't be iran like everyone i think thinks iran is probably the country that would um, lead the alliance that invades Israel. But maybe we have it wrong. Maybe there's going to be some wild card player. 
uh, that comes out of what the What if it is parts. Russia and North Korea? Well, I mean, what if yeah. it do ends up being um, them coming from a different area, but then also uniting with Iran and some of those other countries around about? Because as we know, they're going to be encircled, encircled about and attacked from all sides, right? Yeah. I mean, right now, that may seem like a pretty wild idea, but it's uh, who the heck knows? Like, <laughs> There's so many things that have happened. Uh, in the world and in the United States that nobody could have predicted. So what's the next thing going to be? So, right. so yeah. Um, Some of my initial thoughts that I had after I found out that Trump was winning and it took a, a little bit of time to like realize that it seemed like people on some of the news stations also, it took some time for them to really digest it and like believe it. What some of my thoughts were like, wow, the deceptions and lies in the ma mainstream media are truly astounding and in such a heightened state because of how much negative press and focus they were giving one of the candidates and how much almost like deceitful and false um, amount of press that they were giving the other candidate and also sharing, um, you know, and polls are polls, they're, they're always going to be a bit unknown, but some of them would be reporting on a certain state that they were saying, you know, Harris was up three points in the lead and then he took it by 15 points or 14 points. So they were off by 17 points, but a lot of it seemed to be rooted in uh, an intentional deception. Um, and so that was like really shocking to me that we're now at just this heightened sense of deception. And actually in um, this book by David Ridges, 100 Signs of the Times, he lists out as sign number 82 that there will be an extraordinary increase in blatant lying and deceiving. And then he kind of goes through that in some scriptures and some reasons why and politics. And it just really feels like we're at a tipping point of peak level deception right now. And another thought I had, though, um, from after the election is relief that enough people can see through these lies and deception to turn towards, you know, perhaps more righteous principles that are, you know, more aligned with, with Christian beliefs of trying to protect life and some of these other things. And I'm not saying that people who voted Democrat were right or wrong and people who were voted Republican were right or wrong, but it just seemed um, kind of a relief to me that people were seeing through it and that there was such a large voter turnout. Um, also, I thought like the power of prayer is real because I know a lot of people in the nation and a lot of Christians were praying for there to be an honest election and also that hopefully it would go in more of a way of like pro-life and some of these other areas that it looks like it is going towards um, and just like God's loving kindness. Um, I. I had the concern that people may think that things in the world and life are going to get better now. Like the economy is going to get better. Inflation is somehow going to reverse. Like jobs are going to improve and all these things. And again, I think there's going to be some of that. But my sense is that it's not going to be at the level perhaps that people are thinking and that it might not be the case that things are really going to be um, improving very much. I think they'll be improving more perhaps than if it had gone another way for the results. Um, but also I had a concern, which is a little bit contradictory to what I just said, but that if it does go, things become better, or at least for a time, I'm hoping that the saints, you know, myself included and you included, will not become, start to go on the cycle of becoming prideful or like wicked and less on guard than if things had continued to kind of spiral even more globally in the way it looked like it was going with, um, you know, with just like this globalism and and all of the things that were happening. So um, then thinking about the second coming and like the thoughts of the timing of the second coming. And my first thoughts were like, oh, maybe this is further away than I was thinking. You know, maybe it's not tomorrow. Maybe it's not in a year or two. Uh, maybe it is 10 years. Maybe it is 12 years. But then I was thinking and reminded of that, the, you know, just as there was a day set for the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, so also is there a day set for his return to the earth. Like the date is set, regardless of who becomes president, regardless of, you know, if things start going smoother or harder in the world. But also Satan is raging right now. And I'm getting a sense for myself, my family, people in my um, community, and also people um, like people who watch YouTube, that Things are happening for them, too, where they just sense that Satan is raging. He is throwing a fit. And so I think that that increase in wickedness and the adversary and his minions, their increase in all of the attacks, it's because they know that Christ is about to come. 
Um, so I really don't think that whoever won the election um, is going to affect the timing of the second coming. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I have uh, I have like, I think, three quotes on my spreadsheet called Common Misconceptions. Uh, quotes, Common Misconceptions. The link for my spreadsheets is in the description box of each video. But if you look, if you go to that tab, uh, there's one because that, that's like a common misconception is people think that the timing of the second coming is fluid, that it could be sooner if we're more righteous or sooner if like the world is like really wicked enough. Right. And um, Joseph Fielding Smith, Elder Bruce R. McConkie, and I think others have talked about the fact that the timing is fixed. So that's correct. Right. And uh, another thing. Uh, I think, it, yeah, during his speech last night, he talked about the fact that during his first four years, there weren't any new wars that broke out. And one thing it says in the the Bible, uh, I think in Matthew 24, mm -hmm. maybe, no, maybe not Matthew 24, but it, there's a part where it talks about they're going to say peace and safety and then sudden destruction uh, will come. Wow. And so we may think like, oh yeah, Trump, you know, now he's going to, uh, put out the fires across the world. He's going to uh, be a strong president and the foes of America and, the, and uh, Israel aren't going to make the moves that they would have otherwise. So everything's actually looking good. But then, uh, you know, peace and safety, maybe something will happen really fast that nobody saw coming. Yeah, that's a so, good point. And then also, um, I don't know if you, I don't think you saw my live stream last night, but I did a quick live stream as I was waiting for Trump to take the stand and give his speech and I was just uh, sharing a few of my thoughts on the symbolic side. I, I really feel like there's something to this. The fact that his name is Trump. Mm -hmm. That's something that a lot of Christians outside of our church were talking about on YouTube, like on those second coming channels before I started my channel. They were talking about the fact that his name is Trump and that immediately if you're Christian, it, it, well, if you're Christian and you're interested in the second coming, that probably draws your mind to the book of Revelation um, when it talks about the trumpets and trumpets are really associated with the last days and the second coming. And then when you have him and his first vice president, whose, whose last name was Pence and you put it together, Trump Pence, it sounds like trumpets. And now we have, uh, so that was like the first Trump, so to speak. I'm not saying that this is fulfilling prophecy, by the way, if that's what you think I'm saying, but you have like that first term, Trump Pence, and now you have this second term, and now it's Trump Vance. And even yeah. that kind of still sounds like trumpets. It but does. It's like you have like his first term, and then there's a, a space. Uh, there's, you know, a term in between with Biden, and now it's like his second one. And everyone has been posting about the fact that the only other president in the United States that, have, that's, that hasn't served uh, their two terms consecutively was... Dang it. I, I can't remember at this point. Was it Garfield or was it somebody knows? Put it in the comments. I, I forget. But there's only one other. Wait, was it Cleveland? There's only one other president that has served um, like this where it hasn't been two consecutive terms. So that by itself, that by itself is also interesting, you know, but it's like I feel like you have this. It makes me think of the Jews during Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year. Rosh Hashanah is the Feast of Trumpets. And what they do is they 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 blow the shofar, which is a ram's horn. And there's these specific uh, patterns or these blasts that they're supposed to do that represent different things. And so it makes me think of like, you know, one of them is called Tekia. The, the other one is called Terua. And it's like, du, 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 or, you know, it's like broken up into different blasts. And so you have like these two trump terms and i know that's probably wild for some people to think about and i'm not saying there's anything to it but there could be um could it this is so far-fetched i probably shouldn't even bring it up in a video but like the half hour of silence we know that the heavens were open because during general conference they say again and again that the heavens are very open but maybe in some sort of symbolic way that there was a half hour of silence that the things were closed for a while because of that time in that four years in between i don't know just it was just a random thought that came to my head i mean why not who knows like we'll know someday for sure but <laughs> right it'll be so of... it'll be so interesting to see all the things that we didn't know and the veil will be lifted it'll be like oh my gosh well we knew before that that's how it was going to be and then that's how it was but we didn't know but now we know also yesterday interestingly enough tropical storm Raphael 
developed into a hurricane officially yesterday afternoon on a United States presidential election date. I did go and check, and that has never happened in the history of any U.S. presidential elections where a storm has developed into a hurricane on that date. And it looked like actually that there wasn't much um, interference of actual voting of election days from any hurricanes or tropical storms, because it's pretty rare for this time of year to be having, I know hurricane season goes through November, but it's pretty rare for there to be big storms that develop at this time of the year. And now this morning it developed into a category two and now into a category three. And I myself just find symbolism and like, not symbolism, but I see that that is nature, which is God showing us the contention, you know, the the division, um, all of that is like a warning through things that are developing on the earth through nature of actually forming a hurricane on the United States presidential election day, somewhat like that blood moon that you pointed out a couple of years from a couple of years ago, like that doesn't look good. And yes, I think that the election results turned out in probably a lot of, uh, in a way that a lot of viewers that watch your channel are pleased about and that feel relieved about, um, including myself. Um, and I still think that things are hastening. Everything is, the Lord's work is still hastening and the signs are still hastening and the wonders. And so I do see that like Hurricane Raphael, I'm very interested to see what it does. From a category three, it's going towards Cuba. It's going to make landfall. Cuba is a communist nation. That could be like a warning as well of like, look, y'all, if you keep going down a certain path, <laughs> that, never mind. I'm going to stop right there, but it is interesting. Is that the same... Um hurricane that we were worried about with Jen and from no Christina it's Poppy. a different one the other one was a, a female hurricane name um and that one kind of like went away quickly and while she was gone like her, this tropical storm Raphael popped up really quickly um so that's what's over kind of in the Caribbean area right now about to hit landfall with um Cuba and then they don't know where it's going to go afterwards it does look like it is probably going to come up to the United States but they're not necessarily saying if it will be any level of a category of a hurricane or if it will be a tropical storm. So it's something I'm definitely watching. I want to do a video on it. Well, I was not tracking this hurricane at all. I've actually been doing a very poor job this year at tracking like disasters and stuff. Well, for one thing, 2023, there were all sorts of wildfires, like record breaking wildfires. So it was kind of easy to track that. Uh, that's when we had Lahaina, uh, August of 2023. That was a big story. Um, and there was a time when I was trying to track all these like floods and, and I just, it was too much and I couldn't keep on top of it. So this year I've kind of like just stuck more with like doctrine and other signs of the times. But <clears throat> when you said Raphael, that really, uh, that really caught my, my attention because Raphael is one of, sorry, you got this fly flying around. It's like cold outside. There's no bugs. I don't know why there's a fly in my house. Okay. So Raphael is one of the like the archangels, right? Um, you have like Michael, which is Adam, Gabriel, which is Noah. And Raphael, uh, the only thing that, I, that I've heard from any general authority is from Elder Bruce R. McConkie. And he said that Raphael could actually be Enoch uh, wow. or somebody from Enoch's uh, dispensation. But that's interesting because we're expecting the return of of the city of Enoch. That's like one of the main events of the second coming is that the, the new Jerusalem or the Zion from above the city of Enoch, which is essentially all the resurrected righteous saints are going to come down and join with the church. They're going to join together. And so for a hurricane, a hurricane named Raphael that could actually be Enoch. And for that to happen at this particular time, like that's really interesting. That, well, that, also just the fact of like, there's never been a, a hurricane that developed into a hurricane ever um, on an actual U.S. presidential election day. Yeah. Um, so, like that alone also to me is is telling. I mean, it means something for me at least. Like it means it is a sign for me. Yeah, that's probably going to be one of my next videos because I'm going to have to look into that now. Yeah, I think that's a sign. Yeah. Um, shifting, gears, shifting gears just a little bit. When I was doing yeah. a live yesterday, I kind of accidentally landed on this um, quote that you may want to, I'm not sure if you have this quote on your um, spreadsheet, but you know how you've, I was going to use a poor choice of words. You know how you have tried to kind of highlight and share about 
people's understanding that there is prophecy that the United States is going to fall, so to speak. And you've asked viewers even like, please send me like your sources and your references. And you've done several videos on it. Mm -hmm. um, I found something that was really interesting um, on the flip side about how it's going to stand, like it will not fall. So I don't know, do you want to hear that quote from President yeah. Harold P. E. Lee? Yeah, um, he, he shared this at Rick's College in 1973. This is found in the book, Living in the 11th Hour by Robert L. Millett on page 84 under the section of Wars and Rumors of Wars. And he shared that um, men, may, men may fail in this country. Earthquakes may come. Seas may heave beyond their bounds. There may be great drought, disaster, and hardship. But this nation, founded on principles laid down by men whom God raised up, will never fail. So I'm going to pause right there. I have a little bit more, but I want to pause right there. At first, when I read this and I was doing my live, I was sharing about, you know, the wickedness of people who may take office, but that the actual principles founded, you know, the Constitution, those actual principles, those will never fail. Like, that's how I had read it when I first looked at it. But then when I'm looking at it right now, and I'll, I'll send this to you, it says, but this nation, comma, founded on principles laid down by men who God raised up, comma, will never fail. So this nation will never fail. Now, continuing on. This is the cradle of humanity, the place of the new Jerusalem. I have faith in America. You and I must have faith in America. If we understand the teachings of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I plead with you not to preach pessimism. Preach that this is the greatest country in all the world. This is the favored land. This is the land of our forefathers. And then here's the real kicker. It is the nation that will stand despite whatever trials or crises it may yet have to pass through. Okay, so I um, 1973, I'm not sure what office, you know, President Harold B. Lee held. It says president, so maybe president of the quorum, um, perhaps prophet. Wait, was Harold, sorry, guys, I was in the gospel for like a long time. Harold B. Lee was a, a prophet or? Yeah, yeah, he ended up becoming <laughs> president of the church. Yeah. Um, so I don't know 1973, but that quote says in two different places that this nation will never fail and that it is the nation that will stand despite whatever crisis and trials it has to pass through. Yeah. And I just found that comforting yesterday, not knowing what the election results were going to be. And I think it can continue to be comforting, um, like moving forward, because more things are going to happen and politics are still going to be nasty. And the media is still going to be next level deceitful. Um, and, you know, things may get a little bit better, or feel re like relief. But I think we're still on a trajectory of just Satan raging and things continuing to get hard while at the same time. The righteous in God's covenant people are getting stronger and more righteous. And the prophet and apostles have shared with us too that there's great things ahead and for us to have hope and the miracles coming. Um, but I think that this can bring some comfort to people who will believe on President Harold B. Lee's words. Yeah. And I do not have that quote. I have a similar one, which is also from Harold B. Lee. But maybe after this video, I can get that from you and add it yeah, to my spreadsheets. You. Uh, the other one that I, I have, I actually posted it recently, well, somewhat recently on uh, like Instagram, Facebook. But um, and for anybody that's wondering, that is not all is well in Zion. This is something that the people that that really like the idea of, you know, the 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 downfall of America because of wickedness. There's people that like really believe that they like they'll look at the Book of Mormon and see what happened to the Nephites, and then they assume that that is absolutely what is going to happen to the United States, and it has to happen before the Second Coming. And I don't believe that's true because here we have a prophet saying that it's not true. Right, uh, and also the the thing about like the Constitution will be hanging by a thread. What I just read about the United States never fit this country never failing and being able to stand through all the crises and things it goes through. Those things are not like mutually exclusive. Like we can have the nation still stand through all the crises and have the constitution hanging by a thread. Like both of those things can can happen. It just doesn't mean that the constitution is hanging by a thread and then we we do fall. Like it means that the constitution is hanging by a thread, but then event like at the end we do, this nation still stands and will not fail. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it does. And uh, all is well in Zion, just really quick. That's one of those things that people will take just just that phrase and then apply it to whatever they, whatever they want to argue. When you read the scriptures, all's well in Zion is talking about 
becoming spiritually complacent. So like yeah. when we think that it's okay, um, you know, we, we take these different issues that we know is against the commandments and against the Lord's way. And then we just kind of let those things uh, into our lives and to seep into the church. It's like when we don't call out evil for what it is, or we, we ourselves adopt uh, worldly philosophies that is all as well in Zion. Like, Oh yeah, the church is fine. Like it's never been better. Like, yeah, you know, now we're accepting this and this and that, but everything's okay. That's what all's well in Zion means. It doesn't have to do with the downfall of America. Um, okay. And then Jared, the what, do you, what do you, what do you think the next four years are going to look like, like temporarily and spiritually? What's your sense? I really don't know. I, cause I, I still think that the second coming is really soon. Right. So I guess right now, um, I feel like it could be a situation where peace and safety and then sudden destruction. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm of course more interested in just like seeing what actually happens, but it certainly seems like the second coming is soon. If we just listen to the plain words of the prophets and the apostles, uh, despite this election, and, um, and I guess like maybe the last thing, because we should probably wrap it up here. Yeah. The last thing is last night, uh, I was another thought that I had was that this, he is the 47th president of the United States. And it, anytime you have a number that ends in seven, it seems like it's significant or anything having to do with sevens. Right. So for example, Joseph Smith, he was 14 years old, uh, when he had the first vision, which is two sevens. Uh, Brigham Young died in 1877, and that's also the year that the St. George Temple, like the the oldest operating temple in the church, uh, it was dedicated in 1877. The Palmyra New York Temple, which Gordon B. Hinckley said is maybe the most important temple in the church because it's right there by the Sacred Grove. Um, and it was a temple that the dedication was broadcast to the entire church. It is the 77th temple of the church. And I can cite all sorts of 77s. We have or all sorts of sevens. Now we have President Nelson, who is the 17th president of the church, right? And, yeah. and just so everyone understands, uh, when you look at the student manuals, the Institute student manuals, and you read about what seven means, it's a number of wholeness. It's a, it's a number of completion. Um, it's a number of perfection. And so when you read the student manual for the book of Revelation, it points out that the probably the reason why there's seven trumpets and seven this and seven that is because it's meant to represent a uh, completion of like this, this 6,000 year period, like it's coming to an end. And these are the judgments that are coming out before the millennium. And so here we have Trump and uh, he's now the 47th president of, of the United States. And so maybe we're at the end. You know, yep. maybe, maybe we're and, at the end. And I know you've brought this up, but President Nelson's last talk of the Lord Jesus Christ will return again. I don't remember the exact title, but it was 14 minutes and 49 seconds. And that's all, just sevens all over the place written all over that. Um, but if I could just share for my kind of closing thought is that yeah. we're going to we've seen it's already like in process of being fulfilled, if not practically fulfilled is a sign um, that people will refuse to believe obvious truth and will instead adhere to fables and falsehoods. And we've seen so many people who believe in deceit and lies and things that are just, there's no truth rooted in it at all. But then President Nelson has specifically charged us to look at the general conference talks as to be a litmus test of truth for the next six months. So there all are a lot of people who are believe, you know, they refuse to believe obvious truths. And one way that we can combat that for ourselves and also, you know, the very elect will be deceived, um, can be deceived, not will be, can be. Um, and some are being deceived who are elect. I know that's kind of a point of um, um, discussion if, if that can happen or if it can't happen. But the way that we can fight that is by, uh, using general conference in the words of the prophets and apostles and leaders as the litmus test for ourselves and for our families. Yep, absolutely. All right, you guys, uh, make sure to subscribe to our channels. Mine is Christian Homestead and Mindy's is Temples of Jesus. So if you haven't, please subscribe. It really helps our channels. Uh, we're also getting more serious with Instagram. So follow us on Instagram as well, please. 
Um, like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. And then also share it with anyone that you think would be interested in what we talked about today. And we'll talk to you guys later.